the Miami Dolphins will begin their quest to return to postseason glory this coming Sunday. Their 2021 season kicks off in the exact same way that they kicked off the 2020 campaign, with an away matchup against the New England Patriots. Any Dolphin fan over the last 20 years recognizes that this New England team is not the Tom Brady-led dynasty that dominated the NFL for two decades. It is also not the same team as it was last year that went 6-10. New England spent a considerable amount of money on free agency, bringing in players all across the roster to help them move forward as a franchise from the Tom Brady departure. They also drafted their next franchise quarterback hopeful in Mac Jones who has been given the starting job, beating out last year's starter Cam Newton. On top of all of that, the Patriots are also going to be getting a few starters back this year who opted out last season. Even though this team has a ton of new and young faces, the Patriots are always going to play tough, disciplined football for as long as Bill Belichick is still their coach. This may be a bit cliché, but Miami will have to roll out a strong game plan to take a few of the Patriots' key players out of the equation where they can. Let's take a deeper look at some of the players that the Dolphins need to be wary of going into this divisional matchup. With Stephon Gilmore out of the starting lineup, it will be up to J.C. Jackson to step up as the number one cornerback for this New England defense. In reality, Jackson doesn't have a ton of stepping up to do to take over for the 2019 Defensive Player of the Year, even if he is not as purely talented as Gilmore. Jackson is a young, talented cornerback who has a nose for football. In the 2020 season, Jackson finished second in the league in interceptions, behind one Xavier Howard, hauling in nine of them including one each from Miami starters last season, stats courtesy of ESPN. Jackson also recovered two fumbles, further proving that he is very good at getting turnovers. Hay may not be the best coverage corner in the league, but he makes up for it with big plays at the right moments that can be real momentum swingers. The talented fourth-year corner out of Maryland is a quality defender who needs to be accounted for in the passing game. Quarterback Tua Tungavailoa will need to do a good job of reading Jackson's coverages and making sure that the ball is out on time. If he's late on a throw, Jackson will intercept the ball killing any momentum the offense may have had. Miami receivers, mostly Devontae Parker and Jalen Waddell, will need to use their skill sets to get separation from Jackson to give Tungavailoa the opportunity to make those appropriate throws. Jackson is by no means a lockdown corner and if Parker and Waddle are on their games, they can beat him in coverage enough times to turn the game in Miami favor. Donta Hightower is a name that Miami fans know all too well. The talented linebacker has wreaked havoc on Miami's offense for the last few seasons but missed the 2020 campaign after opting out. With Hightower back in the lineup, this team becomes much more dangerous on the defensive side of the ball. Hightower is a player who does it all for the Patriots. Over his nine-year career, Hightower has racked up over 500 tackles to go along with 25.5 sacks, stats courtesy of ProFootballReference.com. His range at the linebacker spot is dangerous for any offense he goes up against and he has done a good job over his career at ruining Miami's offensive game plans. The good news for the Dolphins' offense is that Hightower is coming off of not playing for a whole year. There is bound to be a bit of rust that he will need to shake off and it might take a game or two to do that. Miami will need to focus on getting their hyper-athletic and speedy receiver options to work the middle of the field to make sure they can take Hightower out of the passing game. For the running attack, Miami's offensive line is going to need to get consistent and solid pushes up front that can engage multiple defenders, allowing some of the interior linemen to get to the second level, where Hightower does most of his lurking. If they can execute these plans well, they should be able to take the talented linebacker out of the equation on Sunday. I'm going with a combo of players here that Miami will need to be wary of when they see the field at the same time. Historically, Miami has struggled going up against opposing tight ends. Their linebacking corp has just had the hardest time securing the middle of the field, even with various additions to the roster to try and do just that. With the addition of Eric Rowe a few seasons ago, Miami started to turn that unfortunate history around. Rowe has shown time and again that he is capable of taking out the opposing tight end, with few exceptions. The issue is that most opposing teams have one solid tight end, whereas the Patriots have two. Neither Smith nor Henry are at the Travis Kelsey or Darren Waller level, but both are athletic players who could do some damage in the passing game if they are not appropriately handled by the defense. 
I feel comfortable with the idea of Eric Rowe being able to cover one of them, but guys like Jason McCourty, Jerome Baker, and Javon Holland are going to need to make sure that they are not letting these guys get open in the middle of the defense. One of the best ways to rattle a rookie quarterback is to take away his safe options, which are usually tight ends and running backs out of the backfield. Miami's secondary should be able to keep up with the Patriots' less-than-threatening wide receivers, so focus on shutting down their tight ends as a must.